Have you ever followed someone and thought they were leading you in the right direction? A few years ago, my mom and I were traveling together in England. We wanted to visit the beach. So we hopped in the car, put on the maps that we want to go to the beach. And as we were driving, we realized we were not heading to the beach. <laughs> the roads were narrow. There were no cars in sight. And we looked at each other and we knew we are lost. And we continued driving and do you know where we ended up? On a sheep farm. <laughs> Can you think of a time perhaps you and your brother and sister were walking and you got lost on the way? Perhaps here in East London in the Dusty's Trail or at a park with your mom and dad? Or maybe sometimes you have gone into the shop and went to a different place and before you knew it you couldn't find your mom and dad. Parents, perhaps you can share a story with your children here of a time when you got lost. Today's story is about three kings we read about in the Bible and each of these kings started perhaps in the right direction but ended up going the wrong way. As we read today, I want you to listen to what caused each of these kings in the story to turn away from God. Let's start this morning in prayer and then we will go into the story. Father God, we thank you that we can come before you today. And Lord, we thank you for your instruction and your word which you have given us, that we can learn from it and grow in it. And follow your way of life. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Herod, eh? you forgot to tell us about the questions. So now there will be questions coming up next. But I encourage you, if you feel like you haven't understood the story, pause and read it again. And after you're confident enough, go to the next slide and engage and answer the questions with your family. After we've read, let's think about it. Israel's three kings each had an area, which I asked you to listen out for, which led them away from worshipping God. Now the first king, King Solomon, was known as the wisest king. Yet he became the foolish king. Why? That's right, because of his love for many wives. Not just many wives, but also wives from different nations, which God said, do not marry them because they do not worship the living God. They worship false gods. And the Bible says that Solomon's heart was led away from God. And he started worshiping the false idols and gods of his foreign wives. So the second king, his son comes in, Rehoboam, and what was his fault from leading the people and himself away from God? That's right. Rehoboam listened to the wrong advice. What advice did he listen to? The older men were telling him not to be as strict as his father was on the people of Israel. To be a gentler king, to be a better king. But he chose to listen to the wrong people. He listened to the younger friends. We told him to be stricter, to be more harsh on them. 
And what happened? Rehoboam lost the people of Israel, and only a few of them stayed under his leadership. Now the third king, which ten of these tribes that left Rehoboam fell under, was Jeroboam. Two interesting names. And perhaps he started in obedience and appointment from God. But you know what I think happened to Jeroboam, what his fault was? That's right. He started enjoying the worship of the people of Israel. And when he realized they might return to the other king, Rehoboam, he got scared and thought that they would return to Israel to go worship God there. So instead, he built false gods and told them they don't have to go back. They can stay right here and worship these false gods and led the people away from the Almighty God. Can you see that all three of these kings started loving something more than they loved God? Firstly, Solomon started loving more wives than God. Secondly, Rehoboam started listening to the wrong advice and turning away from God. And thirdly, Jeroboam, the fame of being king and ruling the Israelites, went above his love for God and he led them to worship false gods. You see, each of these kings loved something more than they loved God. It caused them to go astray and to lead the people to false gods and not the right way, which is the worship of the one true living God. Perhaps you too have listened to your friends and not to your parents. Maybe a friend has asked you to do something naughty like play in the rain, which you knew you shouldn't, but you disobeyed your parents and a few days later you started feeling sick. Or you started wanting a new toy or clothes and forgot to even ask God if there's something you can give away for someone in need. When we place God first in our lives and love him more than what our friends say, the toys or the clothes or the things in our house that we have, our hearts will remain near to him and we will be able to bless others around us. Hebrews 13.8 Jesus Christ is the same Now, through everything we've read, where is Jesus in this story? How can we learn about Jesus through the story we've read in the Old Testament? Well, I think in John, the Gospel of John, Jesus says that he is the way, the truth, and the life. And no one can come to the Father except through him. Unlike these kings who had flaws that led the people to false gods. Jesus leads us to the living God, the Father, the God Almighty. And we can't come to the Father through a person or an idol or a false God. We can only come to the Father, the one true living God, through Jesus Christ. And if we follow him as our King, Lord and Saviour, we will always be heading to the right direction, which is a relationship with the Father and everlasting life with Him. Let's spend some time in prayer and ask the Holy Spirit to show us and to help us to love and follow the Lord with all our heart, body and soul. Parents, I want to encourage you to perhaps share with your children areas where you can grow more in your love with God, things that distract you, perhaps it's your cell phone <laughs> or your work from spending more time with God and helping each other to put God first. Pray together as a family and worship as a response of being able to worship the one true living God. Have a blessed Sunday. Lord, we thank you that we can come today and learn from Solomon, from Rehoboam, from Jeroboam, that we can learn about these stories, Lord, and 
the things that so easily come and distract us from loving and following you. Would you help us, Jesus, to follow you with all our heart, body and soul? In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Parents, here is a great time for you to reflect on this with your children. Maybe you can share with them things or areas in your life that are distractions that you can put aside. Maybe it's more time, on, less time on your cell phone, more time in the Bible. Maybe you too can give some things away together and pray and reflect and worship as we end up this Sunday. Thank you.